Hello everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. And today, topic, I wanted to talk about leopard grasses. I get asked a lot. I do have five leopard grasses in my take. I have three blue stars, a, a um, one Melagris leopard grass, and I also have a Moyers leopard grass. There he is right there coming over the top. There's my Melagris in the back. So I'm going to do a, a brief description. Everybody, you know, knows different kinds of leopard grasses and, and stuff like that. So one of the first things um, I want to talk about is, first off, leopard grasses offer, um, they suffer greatly from poor collection and handling practices. So it's very important. Um, I would not recommend buying a leopard grass online. I would always recommend, if possible, um, buying a leopard grass in a, uh, you know, from a local fish store um, or dealer. Um, so, because one of the biggest things with leopard grasses is getting them to eat. So that's why it's important to me for a local fish store and make sure they keep them, have them for a good week or two and make sure you see them eat, not just, you know, eat the food and sp or suck it in and spit it out or whatever. Make sure they actually are eating and eating with voracity. My experience, if I, you know, in the past I made plenty of mistakes, I just like I'm sure everybody when they were new, getting a fish that you didn't watch eat and then get it home and unfortunately it, it you know, doesn't eat in your tank, you can't get it to eat and then subsequently dies. Uh, in short order so I have several hard uh, to keep fish in my tank but luckily at the local fish store I bought them all at um, they were eating very well and they had them I had them you know hold the fish for at least two weeks put down a deposit if necessary um, and all that um, second thing I want to mention about rat leopard grasses is that you know I would never uh, recommend getting a leopard grass or um, really any of the sand bearing grasses such as like my earmuff over there uh, which is a holo you know type of a holochorus grass melanaris and then there's a ananapsis which is a the china grass um, you know or I should say tamarind you can call them you know that as well they all need a, a layer of sand. It doesn't have to be a deep layer. One to two inches is fine, but that's how they sleep in the sand. People, people, some people try to tell you, oh no, they'll sleep in the rock if there's no sand. That's just completely unacceptable. They're very, they get stressed out that way, which subsequently does lead to their demise, unfortunately. So you, want, you don't want a bare bottom tank if you're gonna keep sand bearing grasses, such as leopards and holochorus and that kind of stuff. Um, you know they you know mixing leopard grasses can be very difficult um unfortunately um i think i just got lucky with mine um i've had mine now for several years uh the newest edition and i don't even see where he's at um but he's a, a blue, little baby blue star and he turned out he was a male initially which is odd because he was only like an, he's only like an inch long but he was a male. I put him in here. I have two females, which they also came at different times. See, those are those two. Those two are females right there. And there's the Melagris, There's the Moyers. Um, and those two, for some reason, the the little baby guy, he got harassed really bad for a couple weeks, and he didn't come out of the sand hardly at all. And then one day he came out and stayed out, and they all get along fine now. There was no no damage done or anything. There he is right there. There's the little guy. He turned female, turned back to female because the other two were female and they're a lot bigger than him. So he turned back to a female. Um, but he was even, he was probably half that size when I got him. Um, so, um, but the mix, as far as mixing them goes, it probably is better if you would buy, you know, more than one you know and put them put more than one in at the same time the way I did it was probably it was totally unconventional and if I had to do it again I would have uh, done that you know put them all in at the same time but they all they all get along just fine now there's no problem 
I did have two Moyers Rasses that did get along. They did come in at different times. Um, the one in right now I've had for probably three years now, three or four years. And I put a second one in, and he didn't give, he didn't even care that the second one was in there. And then one day, out of the blue, he just started attacking the second one, and actually ended up killing the second one before I could intervene. So that was a bummer. So there he is now. And I don't know if the second one was turning into a male or what, you know. So, um, but yeah, they all get along good. Um, again, you know, some of the key points to remember is you want to, um, you know, again, I would discourage buying online. I know some people, unfortunately, don't have a good local fish store near them or within driving distance. But if you can, you know, try to get, you know, if you can, if you have the option, go to your local fish store. If they don't carry leopard wrasses, some don't because they are difficult. Um, some don't carry them. See if you can have this local fish store special order you one. Um, if, you know, if they'll keep it, you know, for a week or two after they get it to get it settled in and everything. Because, and another thing too, I, I get asked this question a lot. You know, when you get to, when you acclimate the, um, and I always use a drip method, you know, when I acclimate all my fish, when you acclimate them into your tank, they do have a tendency to go in the sand and they'll go in the sand for, I mean, they can go in the sand for up to two weeks and not come out. You won't see them. So, um, you know, don't be alarmed. And certainly number one thing is don't ever dig for them because they're in the sand. That's their protection. You know, it stresses them out if you try to dig for them. So don't dig for, for the little guy. Just wait till he comes out. Um, and again, it could take up to two weeks, you know, that's possible, you know. Um, but the, the key is getting, I mean, is getting one that eats. That is definitely the key because that's what, that, that is really what is, you know, uh, the difficulty with them. And I have found, you know, because um, some of the rasses I have are rate, rated either difficult or expert only, such as here's the earmuff, earmuff ras, um, the china ras up here, which is a, tamarind um that's considered expert only so you won't get a warranty even if you buy them online you won't get a, you won't no nobody online will give you a warranty with these rasses and there's the leopards so and the biggest problem with these again is getting them to eat you know there's the melagris um so that's that's the important part is getting them to eat and so okay once you do your acclimation again i always drip drip them you know 45 met 45 to 60 minutes you know um i usually drip them in the sump in a bucket and then um put them in the tank and again don't be surprised they'll swim around usually for a few minutes and then they'll hit the sand and again they may stay there you know several days to two weeks so don't be alarmed don't dig for them um if they you know if they if they're good and healthy when you get it they will come out you know um, and then immediately, like I feed my tank, I don't, you know, feed special preparations. I don't, uh, you know, feed fish eggs or do anything weird like that um, because of my water. I, I want to keep my water quality good. I have in the past. And of course, you end up with cyano or degrade your water quality and coral suffer and, and all that. Um, I feed mine Hikari Mysis. P Mysis is good. Mysis shrimp is excellent. I would avoid brine shrimp. Brine shrimp, there's no nutritional value in, really in brine shrimp. Um, you know, it's like feeding a, you know feeding your fish candy, basically. Um, I mean, it's, it's not bad in the beginning if you're trying to get a fish to eat, but you certainly want to switch over to something more substantial, more protein-based, like mysis, which is full of protein um, for the fish. And, and remember, wrasses are carnivores. So Now, mine, for some reason, love seaweed. I haven't put any seaweed in here yet today, but that's where I put my seaweed. They love seaweed. So, um, regardless, um, you know, make sure you get a healthy specimen, acclimate them good. Um, if possible, make sure they're eating uh, at the fish store before you bring them home. And um, as soon as they come out of the sand, then, you know, make sure you have food, food ready. Because sometimes, like I noticed, with all my, you know, hard fish, you know, earmuff, leopards, and all that, 
it, it for they have to take it takes them time to get used to your lighting schedule and your tank schedule. So they may come out like at weird hours. Like my lights come on at ten and go off at ten at night. So they're on for twelve hours a day with a dust to dawn, you know, uh, or dawn to dusk. Excuse me. Um, lighting schedule. You know, they ramp up and ramp down. So when I each each of these fish, when I'd put them in, they would like come out like you know when the lights come on or right before. And then they'd go in, they'd go back in the sand when they, this is when they started first coming out, they'd go back in the sand at like two or three in the afternoon and that's it till the next morning. So make sure you have, you know, your food thought out and ready to go. So when you do see the little guy pop up, dump some food in there right away, you know, and keep your eye out for aggression from other fish. Um, I have had, uh, you know, situations in the past, I'm sure we all have where, you know, you, unfortunately, you get a bad apple in the bunch and somebody is just a holy terror and is, is hell bent on killing whatever. So you just keep an eye out for that because leopard wrasses, whereas they may be aggressive to each other and initially, like mine are, any new uh, leopard wrass that goes in here, mine will give them a good uh, hazing for you know a good week or two. You know, And if the wrasse can take it, like this little guy here, he finally just said, forget it, I'm coming out of the sand. So after two weeks of getting a, basically a beat down, he wasn't tore up or anything. He just got chased and harassed for about two weeks. He finally just said, forget it, and he stayed out. Once he stayed out, the other wrasses just gave up. You know, the other wrasses just went, well, whatever, he's here to stay. And there's no, see, there's no issue whatsoever. Um, you know. So... But anyway, yeah, just don't, you know, don't, don't panic if, you know, again, if they don't, they're under the sand for a couple weeks. But again, when they do come out, they'll come out for, it'll be odd hours. Like they'll come out at, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, go in the sand at two or three, you know, like, I mean, different things like that. So make sure you have your food thought out and, and give them their food. Once they get acclimated to your tank and you have good husbandry practices, you keep your water quality in, in good condition. And if you have coral, you should be keeping it in good, good condition, you know. Um, you know, so once once you have everything, you know, and the, and the leopard grass is eating and everything, you shouldn't, you know, I find them to be relatively hardy, you know, fish. Um, you know, as long, again, as long as they're eating, as long as they have weight on them. Um, I do I find them to be relatively hardy you know but again I mean there's really no reason to buy them online because any online store I've ever seen uh, leopard wrasses are considered expert only so therefore you don't get a warranty other than uh, you know a dead on arrival possibly you know depending on where you buy from so if that's what you're after is a warranty you're not going to get one anyway so it's better just to, to me just to go to a store you want to see the fish I like to see everything before I buy it including coral I don't buy anything in my tank, uh, nothing in my tank comes from an online vendor um, at all, including, um, you know, coral. So, you know, everything comes from a fish store. And sometimes, and I get fish, why, why people like to buy online sometimes, because they have more, um, you know, they have better you know sometimes better selection than at your fish store they have more options you know however I in this hobby patience is key in this hobby you no know, you know how that goes and everybody has to have patience so you know wait wait and get what you want and um, but again as you know as long as they're eating and happy and you know healthy and acclimated to your tank and everything they're long-lived excellent addition to any reef tank they don't bother anything they're also good at taking care of uh, any kind of sneaky bristle worms or anything like that you might have. Um, you know, excellent addition to your tank. And, they, and I do find them to be, again, quite hardy as, you know, as long as they, once they get acclimated to your tank and stuff, you know, like this is my big one. I, I'm thinking he'll be turning into a male at some point. And I've had him for a oh, good three years, four years maybe. Um, and then he, he and again none of these were added at the same time unfortunately um so 
anyway if I that is about it for this video but if anybody has any questions please let me know if you, please like the video please share the video with friends or uh, relatives or anybody that has a tank or has, is wanting to set up a tank and if you want me to do any different kind of there are other kinds of content that you're wanting me to do or videos on anything else I will be more than happy to take any suggestions I'll be happy to do any video or tutorial or anything I've learned a lot in the 10 15 years or 10 years I guess I've been in this hobby I've learned a lot uh, from people and I'd like to pass that on so hopefully people don't make the same mistakes that um, that I have made in the past so um, you know I'd like to you know help anybody I can so Thanks again for watching, everybody. I hope I answer, you know, answered everybody's questions that people have. If not, please let me know, and I'll be happy to do another video or shoot you an, an answer to a question. Um, Rasses are one of my favorite fish. They're one of the most rewarding fish in a reef tank because of the constant movement. They never, ever hide, and um, they're just awesome. I couldn't have a tank without them. I do plan on adding a couple more uh, next year in 2021, so... Um, but nothing that's going to eat my shrimp, so I'm going to stay away from, I've had those in the past, but I kind of grown attached to my uh, cleaner shrimp, so, <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks everybody for watching, I definitely appreciate it, and I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas again, and again, like my video, share it, um, if you have any questions, let me know, I'll be happy to answer any question for anybody, um, you know, I'll be happy to, I'll be having more videos come out and different tutorials on different things and different uh, species of fish. So, because I believe that's all very important. Thanks again for watching.